Hi, in this video we're going to be showing you how you can load weather data directly into PowerPoint. Um, the scenario might be one where you're creating a uh, presentation where you want one of the slides to show your users that you're deploying this to the current forecast every day, for instance. Or you might want to show historical data on a chart. And as you make these presentations continually, you want the data update automatically. And you don't necessarily want to have to go out and get the data and then import it and constantly update PowerPoint. You should be able to do this automatically. The great part uh, with Visual Crossing is that you can. And so today we're going to show you how to do that. Uh, to start the process, um, we're going to go to the visualcrossing.com slash blog page. I'm going to scroll down and you'll see a PowerPoint um, blog that says, how do I add weather data into Microsoft PowerPoint? And this will outline exactly everything that we're doing here today. Um, and we'll, we'll point a link to this at the end of the video. Um, but basically, we're going to be walking through this to show you exactly how this is done. Now, to go ahead and get started, it's quite easy. All you need is a web browser to access the weather data service um, and sign in. And then also you need PowerPoint. So we're going to go ahead and start with PowerPoint. We're going to create a blink blank presentation here and um, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit because it gives you a bunch of default titles and things which we don't need and then we're gonna go over to our insert button we're gonna choose chart and we're gonna choose a uh, line type and then we're gonna choose because we have multiple weather variables on here we're gonna choose line with markers so we're gonna go ahead and click OK and now you'll notice that it gives us um, an Excel spreadsheet this is the data back in the chart, and this is a great thing about uh, PowerPoint and all of the Office features, is that all of their uh, Power Queries and their Excel functions and everything goes go work really well together, and they go nicely um, integrating with each other. And this is an embedded Excel spreadsheet that goes with the PowerPoint that you're creating. Um, and so we're going to use the power of that to bring to fill the data in here. So what we're going to do is click this button here which basically says open this data set in the full Excel editor um, not just simply the uh, lightweight widget and so we're gonna go ahead and bring that over here and see what it um, what it gave us which is this default series that we don't need um, and we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that later and delete it so we're gonna start by going to the data section here and we're gonna go over to the from web option which is basically a power query it queries to the weather data service use, using a web query URL um, which is RESTful API and from Visual Crossing one of the key features that other weather provi providers don't give you is the ability to pull it back as CSV so we could pull it right directly into this Excel spreadsheet so let's go ahead and um, click on that and the first thing it's going to ask us is where do we get the data from so now we're going to use that. We're going to use our browser here, and we're going to go back. All right. So here we're going to use the Chrome browser to access VisualCrossing.com. We're going to click on the Weather Data tab, download weather data. We're going to go ahead and log in. If you don't have an account, we offer free trials as well as well as a free license level. Um, business accounts are also business accounts are also available for purchase, uh, but make sure you have one um, and you have access to the site. Um, here we can download data sets or we can get links to the URL to pull data. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Here we have one location. If you need to um, add a location for yourself, just go ahead and click Add, um, and it will um, go ahead and do that. And on this page, we're basically going to choose Forecast, and we're going to choose Daily Level rather than Hourly or Day-Night Level. So we're going to choose Daily Forecast, and we already have one location for Herndon, Virginia. So once you request the weather data for the area that you want and we're going to do one location um, for now um, click on the query API and now just do copy and this is going to copy the get function um, call um, to the web to the web server and so this is where we're going to what we're going to use in PowerPoint all right so now going back to PowerPoint and inside the Excel editor is still open it's asking us for this URL we just simply paste that in there and we click OK now, it'll take a couple seconds here. It'll connect to the weather, weather service, and then it'll ask us, do we want to modify any of the data? We do not, so we'll just click Load. It will create a separate sheet. <clears throat> You'll see that it did create a Power Query for us, where you can go back in and edit these. At any point in time, if, under the Data menu is the Queries and Connections tab. Um, you can go in there and edit the query how you like. All right. This first sheet that it gave us by default, we don't need any longer. So we're just going to click Delete and OK. And now we have a nice clean forecast for Herndon, Virginia. And this is the data that we want to work with. All right. 
So now the question is, is how do we get the data connected to the chart um, and, and, and get a nice graph of it? So we go up to the top and we use this select data function. And when you click on it, it'll open up our editor again. And it has a series chooser here at the bottom. What we want to do is we want to choose our area of data that we want. So we're going to grab every day for Herndon, Virginia, and we're going to grab min, max, and temperature into an area. And so that's our range that we selected. And you'll notice it immediately did the right thing. It chose min, max, and temperature um, for our series of our graph. However, on this side, not so much. It, it, it thinks that it wants us to map out um, uh, all of the attributes here in the columns, and we just want date time. So we're going to click Edit. It's again asking us for an area. Now this time we don't need the headers anymore. We just need the dates. So we're going to go ahead and select the dates and click OK. And here's what we have. So now we have one series is going to show us uh, min, max, uh, and, re and average temperature. And the other is going to show us the um, our dates, which is correct. So we'll click OK. All right. So now that we have them defined, we can close our data set and we have the graph that we want. Um, we can see the orange is the maximum temperature for any given day, the blue is the minimum temperature, and we have the average temperature right in between them nicely. And so from this point on, you can choose to do whatever you'd like to be able to do with these, and Excel contains a lot of very nice um, graph stylings, so you can choose those and um, in some cases you may have to go in and adjust uh, fonts or you can make um, these bubbles bigger or whatever you'd like to be able to do um, to make this um, nicely formatted for yourself. And so it's, um, it's a very simple way to um, get attractive graphs um, backed by a live weather data service. And let's finish adjusting here with just one more and we'll get our temperatures there now. And the reason we like this style of graph is because it actually shows you the temperature value um, at each point for each day. All right. Um, what also I'd like to do here is obviously I'd like to fit this to the whole page so it looks like all encompassing or you can incorporate this into your own. Um, now the last step here would be to go back um, to the weather query itself and they have refresh options which basically allow you to um, update this data. Right now, you'd have to update the data. You basically have to right click on the data set and say refresh, and it would refresh it each day. Um, but we don't have to do that here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just do that quick refresh change here. And to do that, we right click on the chart and we click edit data. It again asks us, um, for the warning, uh, security warning for the book, make sure we know what we're doing. Um, we tell it we do, and again, we have to go back in and um, choose to edit in Excel um, in the full um, full Excel browser. And that way, we don't have to. We can um, do whatever we'd like to be able to do um, with um, the the refresh and on the on the query itself. All right. All right, so now we have it opened up over here on the side, so we'll bring it over. And now we can go ahead and see um, how to update this query. All we need to do now is just click on the data uh, menu here. And then um, when we're on the data menu, we can look at the refresh options. And the way to do this, usually people would just click refresh all. But um, again, we're setting up uh, a more automated process here. So under the refresh all there's connection properties and we simply just check the checkbox saying refresh data when opening the file and then we click OK and now we're done. And every morning when we come in now the refresh on that query is set up. You go ahead and run this and let's go ahead and uh, finish this off with a nice title and we'll say Herndon forecast. And so every morning we come in and open this and you're giving a presentation to somebody and you want to show them the latest data, um, either forecast coming or history, um, this is how you would do it. Um, and the power of um, the PowerPoint and the office functions and how they work with the uh, web data queries is um, clearly seen here.
All right. So if you have any questions about what we've seen here today, you could simply email support at visualcrossing.com. Any general questions, you can mail info at visualcrossing.com. We'll put a link to the blog so you can follow along either with this video or with the blog or both. And um, again, we look forward to hearing from you and we hope you find this useful. Um, thanks for watching.